So this is Penn's Creek. Uh, it's the 20th of October, 2022. And it's about, I don't know, noon, noon 30, something like that. But I'm just starting out for the day. I work this morning uh, in the cabin and uh, just came up here and I'm gonna start fishing, uh, probably in the catch and release area below the tunnel. But just to show you some elements here for fall fishing. Uh, water's relatively low. Uh, it's very clear. There's um, a good many leaves on the water, as you can see, flowing down there. This is going to be kind of a difficult day relative to the leaves for dry flies. But if you can get a, a nymph or an inchworm past all those leaves, uh, there's a pretty good chance you're going to catch some fish. Uh, there might be some other places where the leaves aren't as bad, uh, especially later in the day. Sometimes when the sun hits the water, or when the sun hits the trees first thing in the morning about 11 o'clock or so they start to come down um, and you just get waters choked with these leaves beautiful scenery here uh, just post peak i would say maybe peaking some trees are peaking and others such as the um, oaks are just coming into peak it looks like good conditions water's not too low we've had some rain up here and um, I think I'm gonna be by myself because there's really nobody here whatsoever. That's another thing I like about fishing in the fall. It's about 45 degrees. There's a good stiff uh, northwest breeze. Front came through. Uh, they actually had some snow up in the um, northwestern part of the state. Flurries uh, last couple of days. That's gonna be warming up. I have two days, today and tomorrow. Uh, today's Penn's Creek, tomorrow is probably Big Fishing Creek. Hopefully catch some of the late later fall fishing. Uh, I was here earlier in October and it was really good. Uh, that's it. Here we are, Penn's Creek. October 20th, 2022. Uh, bright sunny day, breezy, low water conditions, very clear, um, cold in general. Uh, but the, um, the sun might get the flies moving. Uh, you might see some bluing olives, some midges, even aphids coming down. If it gets warm enough, some ants on the warmest days. Slight drake or two. Um, and of course, trout are still receptive to certain terrestrials. Uh, you'll see caddis as well. Um, right now I'm just gonna 
put on a Parachute Adams as a facsimile of a Slate Drake or a Caddis and either a CK Nymph or an Inchworm, which works good this time of year. And just test the waters here at this one pool. Uh, move on, move on down. I've got lots of river to fish today and hopefully you get a few. Just a beautiful day to be out. Fall fishing at its finest. Very difficult. That is a driving wind right now. So I'm close in um, to a fish rising right here. There's one or two of them right in this spot. About 15 feet from me here. And I think they're taking olives. There he goes. He just kind of came up very subtly. So they have this sort of olive emerger on right there. There's one behind that rock. There's one behind this rock. So I found this um, group of trout feeding in this slower pot water in this riffle area, uh, taking very subtly to blooming olives. So I, put, I had a uh, parachute atoms and I put a blooming olive emerger as a dropper. And this is like the second fish that came up. It's like 14 inches around here. It's long. Beautiful fish. Another nice brown. Came up up to the parachute atoms. A little bigger than the last one. Seems to be this fall, the broken water has been the best, most productive water. Where the pools have been pretty dead. And really on this guy, and I'll show him to you. So this is a probably a 16 inch brown just took a parachute atoms right in the spoken water here a little bit of a riffle subtle rise which they've all been like that today second fish um parachute atoms high riding fishing the water it was a few rising to blooming olives i was sight fishing too but in this case i'm fishing the water and he came up and took it um, I think he's about 16. So if you're patient, like I said, and um, can stand the cold and the wind and the leaves in the water, and um, the complete solitude, which I don't mind at all, <laughs> uh, you can get some of these nice browns here on Penn's Creek in the fall. Okay, we're gonna put you back in. Yeah. For the next fish. So this is a slate drake. Uh, just came out of its shuck. You can see the shuck is next to the edge of the water in the rock. And the dun, which looks like a female, is crawling up out of the where the she, she came out of the um, skin and she's crawled up to the rock and this is what slate drakes do not everyone but most of them do where the nymphs swim into the shallows and uh emerge right there on the uh, edge of the rock so today there's slate drakes along these rocks there's another one right there well, i did the same thing i don't see where the shuck is there's another one there. So this is a pretty good emergence. Quiet as it is. So a river will give you what it will. And Penn's Creek is no exception. Uh, Penn's is notorious, famous, I guess, for keeping 
people like me off balance in more ways than one, not just waiting in the river. Uh, every day on Penns is different, and today was really no exception. Uh, I fished Penns Creek for close to 50 years now, and I'm still trying to figure it out. And I fished nearly every autumn, nearly every October, uh, doing the same. And I have learned a few things, and that's one thing I learned is that every day is different on this stream. And what you need to do is to come prepared to change tactics as conditions change. Uh, in this case, this one day was a windy day. It was very bright after a front had come through. A um, lot of leaves in the water and uh, low, clear water. Not a lot of surface activity. There were some bluing olives um, in some spots with some rising trout. Um, and I ended up taking advantage of that in one location. Uh, I fished generally in other situations, especially the broken water. Um, and I ended up getting three trout, one on an inchworm, one on a blueing olive, and one on a parachute atoms, uh, which is rather typical of my style is to move around, uh, find out where the fish are feeding, change tactics, and um, don't stick with one thing for too long if it's not working. Um, I can tell you that there's been days on this creek in October where I walked away with nothing. Like last year, I had a beautiful day, fantastic day, didn't get a strike. I fished all day and I caught every chub and fall fish in the river, but not a trout. There's other days when uh, I've taken 30, 40 fish in Penns Creek in October. When the water was a little bit high, when trout have moved around, when there's pods to chase around in some of the bigger pools. And that all depends on conditions. It depends on when the rains come in, say for a tropical storm. Uh, it depends on the cloud cover of the day, the, the time of the season, whether it's sometime in September or, or early October or late October, or even um, early November. Uh, sometimes things like inchworms work fantastic all day uh, for all kinds of fish. Uh, and other days, uh, the trout don't even look at it. You might get one or two, and it's just not worth trying it. So as an example, uh, October 6th, 2019, I got into a situation where I hooked a mess of trout on inchworms, and that was after fishing for hours in different parts of the stream in a similar fashion, not getting anything. Eventually uh, walked to a pool, which was a half a mile down river, and just at the right time of day, uh, and immediately started to take sizable brown trout, large suckers, fall fish, um, and a few smallmouth bass, on primarily on inchworms, and all in rapid fashion, quick order, uh, eventually catching and releasing 28 trout plus the others uh, in a couple hours. It just kind of underscores the nature of fly fishing in October. Spotty uh, can be very fantastic if you happen to be at the right place at the right time, but just be prepared to change tactics, to move, to look for fish. And um, you should probably expect some days to be really good days as well as the bad days that come. This is number 12 on the clay bank on weenies and they're all nice fish and um, Broadwaters was completely dead. Where is he? Completely, completely dead. And I came down here and I've been fishing for about an hour and a half and the fish just keep hitting and hitting and hitting. I've gotten landed 12 so far. And they're nice fish, so I just want to let you know. There's some days when uh, the blueing olives are coming off and there's not that many trout feeding and other days where they are. Some days are, there's an ant fall uh, on a warm afternoon that makes a big difference. It all depends on conditions in that particular day on the particular stream. So um, basically uh, the things you should be looking for, I think, again, are the slate drake um, 
hatch, especially earlier in October or late September. There's some other mayflies that hatch. Caddises will be um, active throughout uh, the afternoon hours, especially the mornings or the afternoons. And uh, midges and um, hatches of blueing olives, again, are probably the staple. Uh, you can always go with nymphs in some of the locations. Uh, you'll find trout being in areas that you don't expect in a couple inches of water on the side that don't make sense. You'll find them uh, in the pool sometimes, all congregated, depending on what's going on. There's a lot of predation going on. Uh, you will um, also sometimes find the pools to be completely devoid of trout, it seems, and you'll find them up in the uh, broken water. These fish are moving around, they're getting ready for spawning, uh, they're reacting to predation. And um, that's some of the things you need to think about when fishing in the fall. Generally, it's a mixed bag, and so mix up your tactics, keep moving until you find fish. Be careful because uh, it is very low and um, the trout will see you much better in the clear low water. Use the shadows to your advantage. There's a lot of shadows this time of year if you're approaching trout. Stay quiet, um, and I think you'll get some fish. We'll go on to another stream, Big Fishing Creek, which is the day after this one, as another example of uh, fall fishing. Right now I'm just working up um, a series of pockets, pocket water, small pools and riffles here at uh, Big Fishing Creek. This is a lower end. Lots of structure down here. Um, water is moderately low, but in good shape. Uh, it's probably about 1 or 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, and I'm just going to work up through here, up to the car, about a quarter mile upstream. A couple years ago, I came through here and did pretty well um, with both brook trout and brown trout hitting inchworms and uh, parachute atoms, which is my preferred method. Unless a uh, hatch of blueing, blueing olives comes off. So. so just another neat thing about here in the fall in um, some of these trout streams, these are caddises. And I believe these are granum caddis, which are going to come out in uh, late April and early May. Uh, one of the better caddis hatches, the most reliable caddis hatches in the spring. And um, you can see they're all stacked up. They're facing upstream to collect uh, what's coming down. Um, they're all basically made of sticks, kind of triangular shape with the um, opening being wider in the front where the organism is the caddis pupae, or the larvae, I guess, would be uh, collecting food coming down through there. Uh, they're fixed to the rocks, and um, there's just thousands and thousands and thousands, and probably millions and billions in this stream. So that's sort of money in the bank for the spring. Fall is a time of dormancy setting up for the spring uh, and it's all here ready to go it's the first little brownie on Big Fishing Creek and he looks like he came up to the um, parachute atoms about 10 inches that's the first rise and uh, I'm sticking, I think I'm going to stick to the best water because the pockets and little riffles just aren't productive at all. Uh, hopefully this is a good sign for the rest of the day. There you go, guy. Another fish, nice brown, took a blooming olive here. I thought it was a small fish, but it wasn't a really nice fish. Wow. What a surprise. 
Oh my God. I thought I was fishing to a uh, six inch brook trout. That's how subtle he was coming up. And this is easily a 14 inch. Looks like a male in spawning colors. His, red, his spots are just so incredibly red. And he took this tiny little bluing olive. Look at this fish. Oh my Lord. This is kind of what I live for right here. Look at that adipose fin. Hook jaw, that is a nice male. I'm gonna get him back in the water as quickly as I can. Beautiful. I got that pool there. All right, guy. Back out there. What a beautiful fish. So when you get out there and fly fish in the fall, here's some of the things you should expect besides good fly fishing. Uh, you should expect gorgeous foliage in the leaves um, throughout the environs around a trout stream. Uh, you'll notice the um, migration of birds through the area, hawks and eagles and um, things like that. Uh, you'll notice the silence in the woods, which is really a reflection of all the summer birds just disappearing and going south you know, a few weeks before that uh, and leaving those areas that they, they were there all summer. Uh, you'll hear things like chipmunks and squirrels and uh, rough grouse, the things that stick around, um, ravens up on the hillsides if you're in those areas. Um, and there could be some animals that you can't identify walking in the distance away from the stream you know a deer or a bear or something else that's out there um, feeding and getting ready for the fall as well um, it's just a beautiful time of year to get out there um, at one time i thought the fall was a time of dread uh, a time when you're thinking of winter and things dying basically but in reality the fall is um, just a dormant period where the trees are just getting ready for winter. They're all still alive. They're setting buds for the next spring. And the uh, trout streams are really full of uh, immature mayfly nymphs and caddisflies. Um, the trout are spawning. They're going to produce the next generation. And uh, life goes on. And in the spring, um, with all the potential that's left there and, and set the stage is set in the fall, the spring things will burst forth. Uh, when the sun hits the water in March and April and May and everything just comes back again. So it's really part of a cycle. Um, it's just a good time to reflect on your life. And um, if you can think of it in that way, that it's really not a time of death or darkness coming, it's really a time of um, change and setting the stage for a rebirth next next season uh, i think you can get through it uh, plus it's just a darn nice time to be out there you may fly fish for days without seeing another fly fisherman it's just really great and the fishing can be good if you know what you're doing um, last thing i think i'm going to say is just watch out for those spawning trout because if you're in areas where trout are wild they're going to be spawning and um, especially late in october early november They'll be in places, um, very shallow water, uh, braided sections, um, places you wouldn't really know. And if you see them, you may see two or three trout over a red, which is a, a trout nest, basically. Uh, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. Don't try to fish for them. Uh, go around them. Go find some other fish that aren't spawning at that time. And, um, I think that would be a good thing to do. Uh, so those are my reflections on fall fly fishing and I um, hope you guys can get out there um, to try and experience some of the things I have over the last 50 years um, it's probably my besides May probably my favorite time of year is October uh, and I think it's um, there's plenty of room out there and plenty of time to experience it and uh, tread lightly let the fish go and uh, there'll be more for other people to experience in future generations uh, thanks for listening, and I appreciate your, your time, and uh, have fun out in the streams.